If you have a token white and you're hanging out with your friend group of color, you need to ask permission from everybody in the group to bring your white friend. I hate the term people of color. I hate it because it puts me in the same category as people like this. You are not body positive if you are not anti-racist. You can't be body positive if you're not anti-racist. Are you a full black? Full <laughs> half black? What are you? <laughs> I'm half black and half gay. Thank you. Okay, so you're only a half token then. Yeah. But either way, you have the right, according to the far left, you have the right to speak on these topics more yes. than I do. Yes, I'm here so, to be the buffer. Because just because you're comfortable with them doesn't mean that everybody's comfortable with them. I might not be in the mood to deal with white shenanigans that day. That's, that's all I'm saying. And another thing, it feeds into their ego. Like, don't don't let them think they're a good white person. You can't walk out of here thinking you're a good white person. I can't. I have to think I'm a horrible terrorist. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are these imaginary gatherings full of friends that you're even talking about? It labels everyone as having the same fragility. Like, if you're bringing a white person to a group of people of color, please keep that. Like, what? As an LGBT POC, I don't have autonomy. So white people just control me. I control you. Not, you're United not States. oppressed in this country. You're just not. So stop acting like white people are out to get you or white people want to use you to be the, their token Asian friend. They don't care. I swear nobody cares. What's up y'all? Dr. Purity here and I'm going to talk to you a bit about how to decolonize a classroom and how I decolonize my teaching. So first things first, we do not grade over here, okay? Anyone who takes my class automatically gets an A. They're told in the first week that they're going to get an A. The only thing that's required is attendance and I have weeks of um, excused absences built in so that if people are sick or they have family obligations, it won't affect their grade. Just because you're sitting there doesn't mean you're retaining any information, <laughs> retaining the information, I mean. So since I'm not grading them, I'm just giving them A's. Like, how do I know that they're doing anything and how do I know that they're learning anything? Uh, and so I also don't give homework. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, and I run a discussion style classroom. So um, my students and I have equal part when it comes to bringing information to the table. Um, we all sit together and share what we're talking about. Uh, and they get to use their critical thinking skills to apply the things they've learned in all their other classes. First what do you all, think about that? I love that she admitted that she brings the same amount to the table as the, the students. students they seem this. to be, I, just the, by the way she's talking, I'm assuming she's an elementary school teacher. So she's bringing as much to the classroom as a 10 year old. As a so. 10 year old. Also look at the face. We froze on this. That's the epitome of the, of the wokeism. It's like the smug, like the smirk. Smug, like, every time. You don't want to like teach. Like decolonizing for her means I don't have as much work to do. And I hope the parents see that. I really hope the parents see that their kids are going to school to sit there and be decolonized, aka not learn anything. And honestly, like the homework thing, I hated homework. So I'm not going to complain about them having no homework, but the whole give them straight A's no matter what. No matter what. That's, 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 since, that's crazy. How are you going to make it in the real world? This is how they start. The, make sure the real world has no competition, has no meaning. Everything is equitable and allocated based on your need, not based on what you can produce or provide for anybody right, else. Everybody else right. Like it's just, it's communism. Communism. This creates people like, what was it, the 19 year old kid working at Starbucks for eight hours and crying on film? Bruh! <laughs> That is literally what this okay, type of, of- that was a crazy video. I saw- He was I, crying. I think it was a, a guy. Wasn't it a guy? It was, was a, it a like transgender a, individual. A, a tra of course, it was a transgender. It was a transgender individual. I'm literally about to quit. I, like, I get, I'm like a full-time student. I get scheduled for 25 hours a week. And then on weekends, they schedule me the entire day, open to close up on the schedule for eight and a half hours. The word decolonized right. is like anti-white, <laughs> even though everyone colonized everyone. I Yeah, I honestly do think people who unironically use the term decolonized these days in areas that have nothing to do with colonization. Like, are you admitting that white people made up the concept of doing homework or like educating yourself or having right. a classroom discussion or doing anything beyond attending class? Because that's racist. Yeah, Cause that's because the, the, the strictest classrooms in the world from what I understand or in Bruh, Indian, say, Asia. say that to an African parent first of all say that to a Nigerian or African parent about oh yeah we're gonna decolonize from the white mind and your kids not gonna have to do homework and not gonna do this and they're gonna get straight A's any African parent would be like what let's talk about the trendiness of flat stomachs again I think a really important question to ask is why do we view flat stomachs as attractive some people in the comments of my first video tried arguing that our obsession with flat stomachs is biological because they're more attractive when in reality the actual reasons are a combination of fat phobia Christianity colonialism anti-blackness classism and capitalism as a lot of us know chubby stomachs are considered a symbol of beauty and wealth during the renaissance.
months. But why did this change? I've spoken about this before in a video, but basically back in the 1800s, things were different. Back then, if you were thicker and more pale, it meant you were more wealthy. Think about it. You didn't have to work as hard in the fields. You were usually sitting on your fat ass inside, avoiding the sun, eating a lot. Now, being thinner and more tan usually means you're more wealthy. Most jobs shifted from being outdoors to indoors, and the more time you have off, the more time you have to go on vacation, be outside, get tan. Also, why do you feel entitled to people's sexual attractions? White colonists started pushing the idea that black people were inherently fat because they lacked self-control, which highlighted the adoption of fat phobia as a means of perpetuating racism and trying to justify slavery. As Sabrina Strings mentioned, self-control and rationality were characteristics that were deemed integral to whiteness. Not to mention the idea of the Protestant work ethic. Decades later, we have a diet industry worth $72 billion and the fatphobic idea that flat stomachs are somehow superior. I honestly don't know if there's any science behind this, but like, I guess it's like the stereotype that like black women are just like thick or have like big butts in general. So maybe that's where like the connection to like fat phobia to like white supremacy comes from. But that's not talking about morbid obesity. That's not talking right. about like being 300 pounds. And there's that's not, big, I was not going to say I ascribe to like the belief of like fat phobia. I don't think that's a real thing. First of all, let's get that out of the way. I don't think that's a real thing. And as somebody who is a WOC, woman of color, and also a I don't, w -O -C. yeah, I'm a walk. Oh um, I also am a non-flat tummy haver. I don't feel like I'm discriminated against because of like the size or shape of my tummy. That's, I, I, I feel just, like it's the opposite now. I feel like when I grew up in the eighties and nineties, Showing my age here. Everybody wanted the flat stomach. Everyone wanted uh, the heroin chic era. <laughs> yeah, like like the Claudia Schiffer era, Pamela and Pamela Anderson, right. like the big tits, like fake. Most porn stars now, not that Pam Anderson is a porn star, but most porn stars are actually taking out their breast implants. It's really mm -hmm. interesting. And most people are embracing their natural bodies, their natural curves. I, I feel like actually people are more attracted to that these days. Maybe it's just in the circles that I run in. No, because I, I tend agree to, I tend to be more attracted to, to thicker women. Thank God they're attracted to people like me, so it just kind of works out. But I feel like it's changed and people don't want to admit that it's changed. They still want to have these no, impressions. No, it's this. definitely changed. There's so many yeah. different preferences now. Like, I would say I have no problem getting dates or you know that uh, is yeah, what it is I'm it not discriminated against yeah I, I know and I have an 85 year old friend that plays racquetball with me all he does is talk about Nicki Minaj <laughs> I said he's a people, white dude he's people a Jewish love white the guy butt. he loves Nicki Minaj I, I, like imagine an 85 year old white dude <laughs> he just he's like I love Nicki I can't explain it it's the weirdest thing unless you know the guy I, lo I love Nicki Minaj that was like I mean, part so of my sexual awakening if you want to engage in and benefit from and profit off of this space and you want it to just be about loving your rules and cellulite and stretch marks, you are at the tip of the iceberg and you've missed the entire point. Body positivity is meant for us to get at the root of the bullshit that we have been taught. And guess what? Fat phobia is very much rooted in racism. I just wanted to comment on body positivity because I feel like it's so bastardized from like the original point of it. I guess yes. I, yes. I thought it was for people who just looked a little different, maybe have like an injury, disability, deformity, they're old, like they have, you know, wrinkles, stretch marks, stuff that you can't really help, not for people with four different chins. And on, <laughs> you know, on the, the fact that I'm like larger, that doesn't mean I'm on your side. Like I should lose weight. I used to be skinnier. I'm like out of shape right now. So I'm not on your side. And right. so now I guess people act like I'm supposed to be <laughs> on the it's side. True. I'm like, no, I'm in here. I'm somewhere deep in here. Okay. Like we got to get this off because now people think I'm like this. It's bad. I have to make videos about not being a queer person. And I'm just like, I'm, a ba I'm like, I'm a base lesbian. You're like, I'm one of the good ones. I'm please. one of the good ones. Please don't take my rights away. <laughs> And I feel like that's where, like, that's where you are. I'm not one of them though. You're like, I am not one of these fucking I'm not people. one of them. Big time, like seriously. Also, black women totally paved the way for us in this space here. So if you care about this stuff, now is not the time to be silent, okay? This is not just about you learning to love your body. This is about all of us dismantling systems that make it impossible for people to just be safe in their bodies. Like, stop bringing black women into this shit. Why black do they do that? Okay, because do you know that they do that with trans with a trans argument too? Yes, because they're racist. They say they that, that why argument. would you masculinize trans women? Trans women are real women. Just like they masculinize black women. I'm like, but I'm an actual woman. You're an actual female. <laughs>
fat phobia sh is racist too because black Americans have like a higher rate of like heart disease and diabetes and, and so obesity related. So promoting this is killing black yes. people. I'm it's like, like promoting the abortion thing. That I'm pro-choice. Yes. But promoting, oh, it helps promoting black women. the idea. It helps right. black, everything is. It helps black women. It helps us destroy ourselves. Like the abortion thing, the trans yeah. thing, the fat thing. It's like, yeah, bro. It's, it's keeping, They're preying on our downfall. It's real. keeping people down and I, you and I are not for it. So we're going to end the video there. We're also going to film another video. Look for that video coming out very soon about how she was an athlete and competed against men. I want to know your thoughts about that yeah. because the trans debate, it's, it's, it's still going on even though it's kind of slightly turning more to the right now, which is good. We need that to happen, but it's happening too slow in my opinion. And I think more women should be at the forefront of, of talking about that because it affects women. Like I'm not even a feminist, but it's kind of like turning into a feminist issue. So yeah, we should oh, talk no, about it. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go follow Olivia. I'll put her links in the description below. She's amazing. She's based Aww. and I, I follow adore her obviously she's like one of the three people i contacted <laughs> when i came out here most people left la this bitch comes to la she's like you know what i'm gonna take a stand. i had to save it i'm gonna take a stand and, and save la and save america i had to yeah for real like and we're and we're grateful for you because this is a shithole right now i'm i can't wait to go home i love you go and follow her love yourselves Peace. bye